there, folks. Christopher German here for the Sunshine News, coming to you once again. Uh, this time, we're back at the Waffle Hut, home of the Smash Burger, and we have an incredibly important interview to do. Now, they're all important, because quite frankly, we don't have a lot of people running anymore. We had, at the start of this campaign, we had like nine candidates on one for one seat, and it was a massive load of people that were running. But it's, we've really winnowed it down now, and now we're coming down to the serious people that are going to be standing for election in a couple of weeks. And today, uh, we thought to keep it fair and balanced, I want to introduce you to Andy Nichols, because he is here today. Uh, we did Regina Jackson last week, and quite frankly, I think to keep it balanced and keep everybody understanding, let's give him a chance to talk once again. We did an interview him once before, but you know, things have changed. And so we're going to make our efforts to make sure that we get the entire picture. And so today, without further ado, please let me introduce you to Andy Nichols. Andrew, how are you, sir? I'm doing great, Christopher. How are you? I am doing very, very well. Um, so we did this before. We did. And um, a lot of people watched it, actually. It, was, it had some pretty good views. What's changed? What's new? What do we need to talk about? Well, uh, we went through the primary, and I got the most votes out of the primary. And uh, Miss Jackson got the second most, and we, we've gone to a runoff. Um, Throughout the summer, I think that it was everybody kind of took a little bit of a breath and a break. And over the last month, we're starting to jump back into it up. Yeah. full throttle. Yeah. We got, I don't know, 30 something days left until the election. So, um, what's changed since then? The biggest thing is the primary happened. Yeah. Um, and, and now we push into the general. And, and in the meantime, there's been things in the county that have changed. There's been talks about budget and law enforcement and the way forward. and communications and all of those things. So there's, there's quite a few things that have changed, I guess. Well, how's the campaign going? I mean, you've, you've been talking with all kinds of people. You've, you've got a bunch of events coming up as we approach election day. So, so how are you feeling? How, what, 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 what's, your, what's your future look like? I feel positive right now. Um, to be honest, I've, I've never been in a political campaign at all. And it was very um, revealing to me as, as a person what it's actually like to go through one. Um, it'd be interesting if somebody did like a, a story or a documentary just on a candidate and and what they go through, the ups and downs. It's it's much more than I think people think. You're, yeah. you're, you're every day you're getting inundated with questions and opinions, and so um, it's been a, a learning experience for sure. Um, I, throughout the entire you know primary season up until now, I've really worked my butt off to learn, to really learn everything I possibly can. I go to almost every board of commissioners business meeting, administrative meeting, public safety council meeting, um, different board meetings. I go to the water users meetings. I've been into the senior center a lot. Like I've, I've just really tried to wrap my head around the multitude of issues and perspectives on those issues within our county and really, really educate myself. Um, what has happened kind of interpersonally over the last four or five months is a lot of introspection and, and really understanding the the weight of, of winning and, and what that means and representing upwards of 70,000 people in the county and, and, and needing to do a lot of deep thinking about what that means and, and how do you best represent, especially in an environment where there's a lot of political divisiveness, to get the, the best common good for, for everybody in our county. And that's really resonated with me over the last several months, and, and I've really worked hard to to get out and educate myself on all the issues and, and really talk to citizens and, and see where they're at on these issues. Now, you took issue with me. Um, I have to admit, I, 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 I don't think I misspoke, but I didn't necessarily say it as fairly as I could have said it in the last interview I did with Regina. And I said that, you know, the, the Hensley DeGroote hour could be re revisited if you get in there. And that was probably not the wrong thing. That was probably the wrong thing for me to say. What what did I say wrong there? How should I have, how should I have characterized that? What do you what do you, what do you have? We've talked a lot about this. What do you think is, is I did wrong? There? Well, I, I appreciate that, and I don't know that you did, did anything wrong. You're your own man. You have the right to say what you want. Um, if that had come from Regina, I think that would have been absolutely fair. Maybe it was a little leading coming from you, but irregardless of that, I, I think I can speak to examples. And this week was a great example. Um, there was a, an article in the paper yesterday that highlighted what's been going on for a couple months with the BLM contracts in the sheriff's office. Um, initially, when that was brought up, um, it seemed like Commissioner Minty was, was okay with approving these contracts and Commissioner 
Hensley and Commissioner DeGroote were not. Um, and, and it was interesting because I used to work that position at the Sheriff's Office, and I think I had some very unique insight into this. Um, and as the former president of the union, I saw that this was a very important thing. And behind the scenes, I worked. I, I talked with each one of these commissioners about this issue specifically. Um, and, and I think that my conversations and kind of my lobbying, per se, as a citizen behind the scenes um, ha had an impact and got Commissioner DeGroote to maybe, well, he changed his mind. He flipped and he voted in favor of these contracts. And, and Commissioner Hensley didn't. And I think we can see right there that... that like I am my own person and me and Commissioner Hensley aren't necessarily going to agree on anything and neither are Commissioner DeGroote and I and, and I will always work for what what the people are telling me and what I see is is best for Klamath County um, and, and in that role and in that specific lane you know I disagreed with one commissioner I think I worked really hard to flip another commissioner and and ultimately helped as as a collaborative process between the sheriff's office and um, and me as the previous union president in order to get those contracts signed and approved. So we have additional funding, be it small, but it, it, it pays for an amazing deputy that we have out there. His name's Steve Leslie. It pays for him to stay on at that sheriff's office. So I mm -hmm. think that's a, a really good example of where, where I'm not the, the Hensley and the group power. I have my own thoughts, my own original ideas, and my own opinions, and, and, and I'm working for this county that office every day, even though I'm not employed and, and I don't get paid to do it, and I'm, I'm passionate about it. Cool. Well, yeah, I, I had to I had to say what I said. I think because it was my personal belief that you know I think the three person commission has a little bit of imbalance on it, and quite frankly, I think part of that led to the major problems we had with the sheriff situation earlier this year and a lot of the various sundry problems that have happened because I think these guys are really good friends. And there's nothing wrong with being good friends, but good friends on a three-person commission makes an unbalanced commission, I think. Well, and so that was that was my thinking on the whole honestly, thing there. And I, I apologize no publicly for <laughs> if I if I mis misconstrued the event or if I in any way, shape, or form imbued your authority or whatever. I didn't mean to do that's that. That's okay. And and in all honesty, I've I've built professional relationships with all three of them because I'm there all the time. I go to all of the, the meetings and, and before and after I get to interact with them. So I have built what I would say is professional relationships, but I wouldn't say that I've built like friendships. I mean, I've, I've never been to any of their houses or hung out with them or went into a social event with them. I, that's, I'm not at that level, nor do I see myself necessarily being ever at that level. I'm yeah. not trying to. That's a good thing. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good thing. Um, all right. So, so speaking of of, of glitches, um, your your campaign with Regina is heated up to some degree. We're having a meeting next week with the Republican Town Committee to talk about you know what has been going on with with her playing with that commission and that kind of thing. How how do you, how would you characterize your your relationship with Regina at this point? Um, I, I, we haven't talked a whole lot lately, and that's probably. The nature of the process at this point, emotions get high. Um, I, I'm, I don't know how my relationship with her is, and, and that's the honest truth. And I guess it, it kind of doesn't matter in a way. Like we, we, we are both giving our message to Klamath County and mm -hmm. putting it on the people to choose who they think is going to best represent them. And, and behind the scenes friendships and relationships, they might take hits and tolls, but I think we're all adults and, and we can all move past this. We, we, we see political campaigns and it happen throughout our country. And one great thing is throughout our country, once the decision's made, um, once the people have spoken, then, then we all rally and move forward in that direction. Yeah. Well, and, and we were just talking about this before we, we, we went on live on the air or whatever it was, we were recording this thing. But we talked about the need to talk and the need to communicate and it's and quite frankly even after this election's gone through you're still going to run into various sundry people all the time because we all live here yes, sir. and that's that that was something i thought i really liked what you had to say earlier about that you know we're all part of the same county and we all need to get along don't we 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 do and and that's why i've i've worked my butt off through this year to to really try to get the pulse of what people are thinking to to really educate myself on all the different issues and the different sides of issues um and and be able to hopefully if elected be that person in the room that can maybe cool things down and, and 
realize that reasonable people can have conversations whether we agree or disagree, and, and, and that's a good thing that mm. we're talking. You know? so, it, does it frustrate you be, coming from a small county that we don't have better polling and we don't have better understanding of where we stand with the, with the electoral process and whatnot? I mean, if, if, if you had your druthers, would you have like pollsters running around finding where everybody stands on this thing? Well, I think if you talk to any candidate, they would probably say, I wish I had some metrics to measure to, to know where you're at. And I wouldn't, frustrating is not the right word, but it, it does bring up, I think, any candidate's anxiety because you're always thinking about how am I doing? Where am I at? You know, the, the horse race, per se. Yeah. And of course, with larger elections, you get some feedback via polling. So not having that. I don't know if frustrating is the right word, but it, if we did have it, you might just focus and have anxiety about the polls too. So maybe there's goods and bads about it. But it's just shooting in the dark is not such a bad thing, is it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, my my gauge and my measure is is getting out and talking to people and, and doing any venue, interview, event, anything that I can go to and get feedback from citizens and, and our community as a whole to, like I said, see what the pulse of the people is. Well, and what does that pulse say? What I mean, you've you've talked with obviously lots and lots of people at this point. What do you what are you hearing from the electorate of this community? What what's what should we be looking forward to? Most people that come and talk to me, and and I've I've, I've tailored I guess my campaign kind of priorities and what I talk about based on the feedback I get from people. And the the top two biggest things I hear about are government transparency, and, and people don't say those words to me. People say the quote-unquote good old boy club. But I think that is a, a term that comes out of frustration of lack of transparent government, lack of understanding or knowing um, what's going on within the government. But that's also in part the citizens as well. I mean, you and I talked a little bit before. It's like 90% of people are, are, are raising their families and working and doing about their day-to-day -day stuff. And they're not necessarily paying attention to what the government's doing day in and day out, where you know, a political candidate obviously is I mean, right. constantly paying attention to it. So it, it, it has a bigger focus. My perspective is different than maybe the, your, your average voter. But as these political seasons heat up, then people start paying attention a little more. And then I think that there just becomes this like lack of understanding leads to, oh, there's this club of good old boys or you know, decisions don't go the way they want. And <clears throat> so what I would like to see if, if I move into government is us really nail down on kind of government accountability, transparency, whether it's at the state level or the federal level, there's, there's literally offices that oversee that in government. County level, there frankly isn't money to build an office like that, but maybe a citizen-involved committee that, that overlooked and oversaw different you know, accountability, transparency, ethical type issues that could review departments and, and help departments make sure we're, we're being transparent with the government. Um, I, I think something like that would be important. I've heard my opponent talk a lot about communication. Um, she does have a background in, in communication, and that's interesting, but the, our government right now doesn't do a horrible job at communicating. People aren't just necessarily interested. You know, mm -hmm. Our government has a YouTube channel. You can go watch every action our government takes. Um, you know, my, my opponent was talking about she wants to weekly give updates to the community about what she's doing. Watch our current commissioners. They give commissioner reports every Tuesday mm -hmm. live on, on YouTube, and they, they, they talk about what they did through the week. Um, we, we do have communication within our county. Um, could it be better? Communication could be better in any organization. Um, but I, I think kind of the, the bigger frustration was what we talked about, that quote, unquote, good old boy club. And, and like I said, I think that is a term that comes out of frustration from lack of maybe understanding. Um, and I, I think that you know, citizen involvement in that process, you know, if an accusation, and, and I'm completely speaking hypothetical here, but something along the lines of you, you have a committee that, that is maybe your oversight for accountability, transparency, ethics, and as, as situations come up, that committee can look at those and maybe be that impartial mediator between, like the situation we had last year with the, the commissioners and the sheriff, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I heard the sheriff in meetings say, I wanted to mediate, I wanted to mediate commissioners didn't really say much to that and maybe we could have a committee that could do something like that in those situations but 
outside of that, maybe that committee, like I said, could look at departments and help department heads make sure that we're, you know, within our ethical and legal constraints and, and doing processes the right way. And maybe that's not the answer. I don't know, but I, I think it's a, a genuine thing that we should be talking about because that's what people in the community are talking about. And the other huge thing that comes up everywhere I go, and it's probably in part to, you know, my previous career, but it's public safety. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about that last time I was in here. Um, that was prior to Measure 110 being repealed. Now that's changed. Now they have the deflection program, which is one tool um, toward changing the, the public safety dynamic and, and getting you know, to the to the left of some of these drug issues that have been rampant for years. Um, but when we talk about public safety um, from a person running for the board of county commissioners, I think it's important to highlight that we're going to elect a new sheriff, and that new sheriff needs time needs understanding, compassion from our community, community to, to get in that office and, and set that office up how they see fit and, and begin running the operations out of that office. I see my place as a county commissioner as a, a role to support that sheriff um, with, with everything they do. Now, there is the check and balance piece, but I will think, you know, is there really, like, the, are the commissioners ever going to slash a budget that would be detrimental to the community, right? Right. That you can't, that, that's not an option. So the option is we have to work together and we have to, to, to find solutions collectively and not just with the sheriff and the commissioners. It needs to, the DA's office, community corrections, the juvenile department, the health department, mental health. Like, it needs to be a collaborative community-wide approach to public safety. Um, what we're hearing a lot about lately is funding. Um, is all you had to do is read the front page, what was it, over the weekend, where it talked about the budget is, is maybe having some challenges. And then if you listen to the, the commissioner's meetings, the business and administrative meetings this week, it came up. And they were talking about potentially 10% or 40 employees to be attrited, not not pink slipped and laid off, but be attrited over the next you know number of years or amount of time, because that the commission is looking five, 10 years out where the budget's at, how much do we want to spend our reserves down? Um, so there's been ideas floated for the last I don't know, year and a half about public safety. Um, out in the community, I hear both sides of this. I hear people say, we're, we don't want to throw more money at law enforcement. And I hear people say, we need to throw money, more money at law enforcement. So it, it becomes kind of one of those almost like divisive issues. What, what do the people want? So um, what has come out are some creative ideas. Um, last year, there was talked about the urban growth boundary and the city police policing that, right? Um, I, I wasn't necessarily, in fact, necessarily, I was against that. I was the president of the union at the time. Why in the heck would we pay an agency that costs more money because a, a KFPD officer costs more than a deputy does? No. So, so why would we pay this agency more to, to do our job? Give us that money, you know, if it, if it was a money thing. Um, that's been an idea floated. There's been um, ideas of carving the county into different taxing districts and letting that district decide you know, if they want to put more money toward law enforcement and if they do and what, you know, like set up a board, that board um, and those people elect that board and those people set a tax rate and then that board can decide how to spend that money, whether it's contract with the sheriff's office or set up their own type of thing. That is an interesting idea as well. Um, there's been talks for years and it's been very controversial about spending reserves, i.e. the road fund. Um, toward sheriff's office services, patrol services. There's a statute that allows road fund dollars in certain counties in, in Oregon to be spent for patrolling those roads. Um, but is all you had to do was read the paper over the weekend. And that road fund is also used for our infrastructure. And we have a lot of roads and bridges and a long-term schedule for the maintenance of these and, and balancing that out. Um, can create, you know, controversial ideas of what's more important, policing or, or our infrastructure. Um, so th th there's a lot of ideas out there on what this looks like going forward and how do we fund public safety. But there, there's a there's a definite economic side to this argument, too, because you get the outlying communities that they have to have economies. They have to, they have, to have security to have an economy. And if you can't get a sheriff to go 
out there because it's too far or it's just not capable to do it, then who's going to start a business out there? Who's going to, you know, how, how is business going to grow out there if they can't keep, keep the place safe? So, I mean, that's, that, there's, there's, a, there's a future for this county that needs to be considered in terms of the public safety because, quite frankly, there are parts of this county that just don't get sheriff coverage because they're too far out there. And if we're going to grow the county, we've got to make sure the sheriff can get to all places, right? I agree, Chris. And that's why I'm talking about there, there are unique solutions that are being talked about. Um, the, the biggest thing that needs to happen in all of this is the people need to weigh in. Yeah. No matter what direction the, the, the board and the, the sheriff decide to go, whoever sits on that board, whoever sits in that office, at the end of the day, the, the people of this county need to decide what they want. You and I might have a vision in our head of what public safety looks like in this county, what the economy looks like in this county. But as we talked about a little bit ago, there's different perspectives and they're just different ideas. And, and our democratic system values and, and demands that the people have the answers. So I think it's important that we talk about all of these issues. It's in, in policy making, it's setting the agenda. It's the first step in policy making. And so what, what is happening right now through the campaign process is agendas are being set. We're talking about different ideas about the way forward in the future in the county. But ultimately, we're, we're going to have to decide on one of these and, and the people are going to need to speak on what they want for the county. In, in our public safety. And platform. all that's going to happen on November 5th when they go to the polls and vote, right? <laughs> they're going to speak for a sheriff and a commissioner, but but I also believe it's important that, that the big decisions that, that that board of commissioners and that sheriff, office of sheriff make also get put back to the people. If it's talking about taxes or taxing districts or or changing funding, um, I, I've proposed an idea if you watch some of my interviews Right now, um, our effective tax rate per thousand dollars is like a dollar seventy-three, um, and, that, and there's certain sense of that earmark for like the veterans fund, leaving maybe a dollar sixty-eight, um, and that total is about twelve million or just under twelve million dollars, which all of that goes to the sheriff's office currently, um, and then plus more that come from other funding streams from the federal government, which have been unreliable at best for those funding streams, which is why we have the talk about budget stuff. But we could potentially, and I, I would be very interested in seeing something put on the ballot where we say, hey, the remainder of that money, this isn't an increase in any revenues or anything like that, but the remainder of that current tax dollars comes in is secured for the sheriff's office. Mm -hmm. It's not enough it, to, to, for even current operations. It's not enough. But it, it could guarantee moving forward, regardless of who's on the board of commissioners, regardless of who's on the office of sheriff five, 10, 15 years from now, that there is a pot of secure funding that will ensure our jail stays open to, to full capacity, that will ensure our search and rescue still runs, that will ensure our civil division is still serving papers around our county, these constitutionally mandated functions of the sheriff. Mm -hmm. um, is it enough to, to have a robust presence all around the county? No, it's not. Um, but it, it could at least maybe detach some politics in the future. As we heard things over the last several years around the country, terms that, that I do not like to hear, like defunding on police, law enforcement. Mm. And I'd like to see less secure, but let's say no matter what happens every budget year, this amount of, of incoming tax dollars will go to the sheriff's office. No argument about it. Because think, think of you as a sheriff each year when you're going into budget season. Am I going to get $12? Am I going to yeah. get $17 million? <laughs> like, um, it, 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 now, it's still going to be a headache for all of the policymakers and the sheriff. Um, but it, it would be nice, I think, for the sheriff and the employees up there to know every year, hey, we have a secure amount. We, we can fund this many positions, this many roles, no matter what. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's important to talk about. And if you've listened, you know, I've talked a lot about things that matter for the employees in the sheriff's office. And, and I gave public comment on Tuesday, if, if anybody watched the Board of Commissioners meeting, I went in and gave public comment on behalf of, of the sheriff's office and, and those deputies. And, and I know that, that the sheriff and I have our differences and we have our disagreements that I, I think are probably on a personal level. Um, but he, he, he made the decision to endorse my opponent and that's great. Um, I, I'm going to announce right now for the first time that I have been endorsed by the Climate County Police Officers Association. 
So all of the men and women. Congratulations. There, all of the men and women up there um, that, that can't necessarily speak because of the, the controls of their job and, and politics have, have endorsed me for, to, to be a voice for them um, on the Board of County Commissioners. Well, talk to me about, in a lot of ways, I think this, this election coming through now is, is a reset in a lot of ways. It's a way to, to bury the hatchet between the, the commission and the sheriff and really start working together. Is that is that how you're seeing it, or, or am I just being hopeful? No, I, I, absolutely. I mean, like I said, we are going to elect a new sheriff. We're going to have a different makeup of the board of commissioners, no matter what. So hopefully, it's maybe a reset is is the wrong word, but hopefully, it's a new, you know, working relationship between all of them. And and I'm prepared. I whether whether the the, the people decide to elect Shane Mitchell or Brian Bryson, I, I have good working professional relationships with both men. And, and I, I don't see an avenue where we're going to be at odds. Uh, I don't think any of us want that. We want to work together for the betterment of our entire county and our, our community. Well, we're coming up against time here, but yeah. um, I want to I want to hit this this before we before we end this thing. Talk to me about your your, your ideas for the economy around here. It's getting jobs for people. We've got a a big Amazon factor or Amazon warehouse that's going to be opening up. We've got the F-35s that are coming in here. But we need some real kind of economic growth in Klamath County, and it's apparently not going to happen with the farming anytime soon here. So what do you, what do you see on the future for how are, how are we going to keep the jobs happening around? Well, it, it, I, w I would say we're doing fairly decent right now. A report came out just recently. We have the second highest GDP in, in, the, count in the state for counties. Um, so we, we are growing, and we are growing at a, a decent rate. Um, I, I also think that we need to be careful with that growth, too, because there are other struggles, like housing. Mm -hmm. you know, we need to balance any growth. There's a fly. There's a <laughs> fly keeps driving us nuts. We, we, need to balance, <laughs> we need to balance any growth um, across the spectrum of issues to ensure that we have adequate housing, that we have adequate services, be it public safety, code important, all of these things. As we grow, there's a bigger demand for services on the county. Now there's more revenue from taxes coming in. Um, but the, the economic development we have had so far, um, is, is it shows in the numbers and the statistics. We are a growing county. And, and I got to give it to organizations like the Klamath County Economic Development Group. They're the ones that really spearhead a lot of this and go out and recruit these different organizations. And the things you talked about, the F-35, you know, I'm, I, I spent 20 years in the Marine Corps, I'm a huge fan of military life, everything to do with it. Um, and I'm super excited to see not only our base um, getting the new airplanes, but the, the, the continued tradition of military service in our county. It's, it's awesome. But the bigger thing is that's going to inject two to five hundred million dollars in our local economy just through contractors to, to do the work out there. Um, so it, it is exciting to see things like that in Amazon and Winco. And, you know, I, you kind of hear around the community like, oh, we get another fast food restaurant. Well, it's another option for you. It is more jobs, as you just talked about. And and some that's some sort of franchise entrepreneur or somebody that, that is starting a new business, that's walking out on a limb. I'm a business owner myself. My wife and I and business partner started a business this year. And, and so there is opportunity and there is growth. And we used the resources that the county provided to help us build business plans, to help us find funding for our business. And, and it was all fairly user-friendly to do. So I don't, I don't know that I believe in a narrative where we're going the wrong direction economically. I think we need to continue to go the way we are, continue to be business-friendly. And, and I'm all ears if people have ideas on ways to, to cut regulations and, and make business more friendly. I, I'm open to those discussions. Let's do it. But I'm not hearing a lot out talking to the people about where where that needs done. No one's come and said, you, you need to do this or we need to do this economically. Um, but like I said, the CASIDA, that economic development group, if you go and listen to their presentations or go to their website and see all of the different projects, whether it's Swan Lake, the F-35, and, and there's different opinions. People have, they, they become controversial. Um, but at the end of the day, just like you said, it's growth, it's progress, it's more, it's happening. More jobs, more money, and things in our economy. Yes. Well, then, if I, I have to give you the opportunity, if anybody wants to get you into office and they want to come volunteer for you in these last few weeks before the election, what do they need to do? How do they find you? 
you can reach out to me. You can call me, 541-979-0944. I'll put my number out there. But I have a Facebook page, Andy Nichols, Elect Andrew Nichols, the website, uh, nicholsforcommissioner.com. Um, reach out to me, talk to me. If, if you just want to talk to me about issues, if you want, if you want to yell at me, go for it. <laughs> like, I, I'm here to be the, a commissioner for all of Klamath County, regardless of if, if you're a conservative and Republican like me, or you're a Democrat and, and more on the liberal side, we, we need, everybody needs to come together. We need to work on solutions for the issues facing our county together and, and not in this you know, hyper partisan environment. Well, we're gonna leave it with that, sir. Thank you so much for visiting with me thank today. You, Chris. And thank you for watching because thank this you. is what needs to happen, folks. We need to talk about these things. We need to all come together. We need to get an understanding of that. And so that's why we do these things. Coffee with the Candidates is brought to you by the Waffle Hut. Thank you so much. Home of the Smash Burger. And I'm Christopher German for the Sunshine News. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.